As early as the 18th century, it had been hypothesized that the galaxy we live in may not be the only galaxy in the universe. German philosopher Immanuel Kant first made this hypothesis in 1755 in a print entitled Universal Natural History and Theory of the Heavens. This print suggested that some of what astronomers called nebulae in the night sky might actually be distant systems of stars. The evidence to support this claim, though, was unfortunately lacking due to the limited technology of telescopes of the time. As technology progressed into the 19th century, astronomers began to uncover the nature of these so-called nebulae. Some were reclassified as star clusters, while others, such as the Orion Nebula, were confirmed as gaseous nebulae. However, most nebulae in the night sky in the 19th century were still far too faint for any astronomers to make any sense out of them with their current telescopes. This left two possibilities for astronomers to consider regarding these nebulae. Either they were relatively close to Earth and very faint, in which case they would be classified as gaseous nebulae in our galaxy, or they were extremely distant from Earth and very bright, in which case they would be classified as star systems containing possibly billions of stars. Finally, in 1917, a telescope capable of observing these nebulae in detail was built, the 100-inch Hooker Telescope at the Mount Wilson Observatory in the San Gabriel Mountains in California. Seven years later, a publication was made in the New York Times from one of the telescope's operators, a 35-year-old from Missouri named Edwin Hubble, that would forever change human understanding of the universe. Edwin Hubble had shown signs of greatness from an early age. Not only did he excel in academics, but he was also a rather talented athlete. He won a scholarship to the University of Chicago in 1906 and studied as a lab assistant under future Nobel Prize winner Robert Millikan during the first year of his studies. Science and sports led Hubble's passions throughout his undergraduate studies. He studied mathematics, astronomy, and philosophy, while also winning competitions in track and basketball for his alma mater. He received his Bachelor of Science degree in 1910, but, however, didn't pursue science for a bit as he advanced his studies further. Both his grandfather and his dying father wished for him to study law, and so he gave into family pressure and took a scholarship from Oxford University to study that instead. He received his degree in 1913 in jurisprudence, adding on to that studies in literature and Spanish. While Hubble was in England, his father passed away, and because of this, Hubble moved back home shortly after getting his degree. For a year, he taught both high school physics and Spanish, and was a basketball coach while he tried to determine his future career, and eventually decided to put his passion first. Hubble then returned to the University of Chicago for his postgrad studies. Just before getting his PhD, however, the United States entered World War I, and Hubble enlisted as an officer. The war ended before he arrived in Europe, though, but he did receive some officer training, along with further astronomy education in Cambridge during this time. He finally received his PhD in 1921 at Chicago, with a dissertation entitled photographic investigations of faint nebulae. It was during his doctoral studies after the war when he was invited to study at the Mount Wilson Observatory, where he would make his first significant contributions to the field of astronomy. The newly developed Hooker Telescope was unlike any telescope to exist prior. After its construction was completed in 1917, it became the largest telescope to ever exist and held that title until 1949. Hubble immediately began using the telescope to observe what at the time were known as the Andromeda Nebula and the Triangulum Nebula. What he and other astronomers in California noticed from these observations was that there was an unusually large amount of supernovae coming from the nebulae. Not only that, but the supernovae were unexpectedly faint, way more faint than one would expect from a supernova in our own galaxy. Hubble and fellow astronomer Heber Curtis from the Lick Observatory at the University of California together hypothesized that these nebulae were actually star systems of their own, what they called island universes, but had no mathematical way to prove their distance from Earth. 
The equation commonly used to calculate distance from Earth depends not only on an object's apparent magnitude or the magnitude of an object as seen from the observer, but also on an object's absolute magnitude or the object's apparent magnitude if it were exactly 10 parsecs away from Earth. Up until the year 1923, there was no way to measure an object's absolute magnitude other than through the parallax method. This method compares how much an object moves in the night sky compared to the background of non-moving stars. The parallax method works for relatively close stars, but not so much for when trying to measure the distance from these essentially non-moving background objects. The angles in which these objects in the night sky move are so small that it becomes very difficult to measure and calculate accurately using the parallax method. In 1912, though, a new discovery was made by a female computer at Harvard named Henrietta Leavitt, the Cepheid variable star. This type of star is one that periodically dims and brightens in a stable cycle. Leavitt noticed a relationship between the period of the cycle of this type of star and its luminosity and gave astronomers a new way to calculate absolute magnitude. Hubble used this relationship in his quest to prove Andromeda a galaxy of its own rather than a spiral nebula. He took photos of Andromeda night after night and finally found a Cepheid variable star in October of 1923, which he named Variable Number 1, or V1. Upon studying the period of V1 and determining its absolute magnitude, he calculated the Andromeda Nebula to be well outside the bounds of the Milky Way galaxy. Hubble had only one conclusion to come to after his encounter with V1, that our universe expands outside our own galaxy. The discovery made by Edwin Hubble, published in 1924 in the New York Times, shattered the then current astronomical world. It was an outrageous proposal at the time and subsequently met a ton of opposition but the evidence, however, was undeniable. More and more nebulae, with the help of Cepheid variable stars, became properly classified as galaxies in the coming years, and the known size of the universe exploded during the latter half of the 1920s. With the uncovering of so many new galaxies, came with it a classification scheme to properly group galaxies with similar properties, and Hubble was also the one to create this scheme. The scheme is known today as the Hubble Sequence and groups galaxies into three main categories, spiral, elliptical, and lenticular. More detailed groupings within these three categories were made as more and more unique galaxies were discovered, and this contributed to the Hubble Sequence's now famous tuning fork shape. Edwin Hubble, thanks to a discovery made by a female computer at Harvard, and also thanks to a state-of-the-art piece of equipment, was able to completely redefine our scale of the universe, expanding it out far beyond the Milky Way galaxy. This single discovery made by Hubble completely revolutionized cosmology, and he was only getting started. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing. Click here if you want to see more scientific progress made during this time period. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.